the opening session Tuesday night, Rick Baldison announced our Golden Hammer recipient for 2016. This award is the highest recognition one can receive in this organization. If we ever create an award above the Golden Hammer, it will most likely be named after him. It was with admiration and great respect that I introduced to you the 2016 Golden Hammer Award recipient, Mr. Steve Brady. I love that old upright. It's 
mellow tone, and when a new carpet and drapes led to the replacement of the large, unattractive upright with a new Ivers and Pond console, I was upset. Picture a gangly 14-year-old silently crying as they carted away his beloved upright and replaced it with the new console. Both of my parents played the piano and sang. I can remember as a young child watching and hearing them play and singing in the evenings and on the weekends. This poem, Piano, by E. H. Lawrence, brings back the feeling. Softly in the dusk, a woman is singing to me, taking me back down the vista of years till I see a child sitting under the piano in the boom of the tingling strings and pressing the small poised feet of a mother who smiles as she sings. In spite of myself, the insidious mastery of song betrays me back till the heart of me weeps to belong to the old Sunday evenings at home with winter outside and hymns in the cozy parlor, the tinkling piano, our guide. So now it is vain for the singer to burst into clamor with the great black piano, appassionato. The clamor of childish days is upon me. My manhood is cast down in the flood of remembrance. I weep like a child for the past. I loved playing the piano, but was not very diligent at practicing scales and exercises. But I was fascinated by what went on inside the piano and dreamed of learning how to work on pianos. Eventually, I entered the piano technology program at BYU. I have many memories of my time in the program, but one stands out especially. I was practicing tuning one day when one of my fellow students walked into the practice room. Now, I don't feel that I had a special aptitude for tuning. I found learning to tune to be very difficult and frustrating at times. As I struggled with the piano that day, my fellow student asked how it was going. I replied, and these are my exact words, well, I can tell you one thing for sure, there's no way I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. <laughs> Bear in mind, my life isn't over yet, so... <laughs> this was a few years before PPG's standardized tuning exam. I remember very clearly that my tuning exam consisted of tuning a large old Hamilton upright in a practice room. Oh, and the piano was a half-step flat. I don't remember if there was a specific time limit, but after I had tuned the piano two or three times, the examiners came into the room and checked my temperament, octaves, and unisons. The lead examiner then said to me, you can come tune my piano anytime. I had passed the test. Shortly after graduation, I got a job as a field technician for a large piano service business in the Phoenix area. As I got started in my job there, I set five career goals experiences that I wanted to have in my career. Number one, to work at a university music school. Number two, to teach both individual students and classes at conventions. Number three, to tune for lots of concerts. Number four, to write for the journal. Number five, to work in association with the piano manufacturer. I thought all of these would be great uh, learning experiences that would challenge me, and, uh, and I proceeded to try and educate myself in such a way that these things could happen. Not many books about piano technology were in print in the early to mid-1970s, so realizing that I needed to make an investment in myself if I was to achieve my goals, I resolved to read all the existing journals. I read them during my lunch break each day and at any other time that presented itself. In my first two years as a practicing technician in Arizona, I read the entire canon, not once but twice. I know <clears throat> this gave me a feel for the history of PPG and an education in current technical practices that would have been difficult to acquire in any other way. 
course, to read the entire journal collection now would be a much larger feat, since there are now 59 years worth of journals, as opposed to only 17 when I entered the field. This idea of making an investment in your life is expressed wonderfully in Robert Frost's poem, The Investment. Over back where they speak of life as staying, you couldn't call it living for it ain't. There was an old, old house renewed with paint, and in it a piano loudly playing. Out in the plowed ground and cold, a digger among unearthed potatoes standing still was counting winter dinners, one a hill, with half an ear to the piano's figure. All that piano and new paint back there, was it some money suddenly come into? Or some extravagance young love had been to? Or old love, on an impulse not to care, not to sink under being man and wife, but get some color and music out of life? So after almost five years' experience in Arizona, I gradually started to achieve my five goals. <clears throat> I applied for the position of head piano technician at the University of Washington, and with a good recommendation from Jim Coleman Sr., I was offered the job at the age of 28. University job, check. <laughs> this new job led to a great deal of concert tuning, check and also to writing my first series of articles for the journal in the 1980s. Check. It was also at the university that I started teaching in earnest. I trained a number of technicians and also taught Music 201, Fundamentals of Piano Technology, at the university for about 10 years. I started teaching at PTG conferences in 1979, and one of my favorite things about teaching has always been that my students have taught me by their questions, which always forced me to continue my own education. Teaching. Check. After my six years as journal editor, I had the opportunity to become involved with the Blutner Piano Company, becoming part owner of a Blutner franchise in Seattle, and teaching for Blutner at PTG conferences and conventions. Subsequently, I worked for three years selling Steinways, and later doing some consulting work for Steinway and Sons. Working with manufacturer, check. My brief experience in sales ended when I returned to full-time piano service after realizing that my favorite days in the store were the ones where I would take out my tools, put on my apron, and prep a new piano. I must admit I never envisioned myself becoming journal editor. That definitely wasn't on my list of goals. Writing books wasn't on my list of goals either. Nor was receiving awards like a member of Note, Hall of Fame, and the Golden Hammer. These were all outgrowths and consequences of a young man with a blank career stretched out ahead of him. A young man who wanted to have challenging and interesting experiences, setting some goals and keeping those goals in sight. Now, we live in a complex world full of many wonderful people, places, and things, but a world also torn with strife and division. The daily reports of mass shootings and suicide bombings are truly sobering and sickening. Although these, although these atrocities may happen thousands of miles away from us, they still affect each of us. We can't afford to become numb to them, and we can't afford to dismiss people, whether we know them or not, as lunatics, just because they happen to disagree with us. Each person has their story. What is needed is greater effort to understand. No man is an island, entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less. As well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. 
any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never sent to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls to me. I think that we as piano technicians are especially fortunate at this time to work in a profession that in its own small way quite literally strives to bring greater harmony into the world. In this regard, I like this light-hearted poem of Stoddard King, an American journalist and poet in the early 1900s. The piano tuner. I like my job, but I would sooner be cast as a piano tuner, the kind of one who understands the temperament of baby grands, whose earnest scientific labors bring joy to all his clients and neighbors and substitute harmonic joys for 57 kinds of noise. Piano tuners ride in fords to rectify eccentric chords, or to improve a sour cadenza that's popular as influenza. <laughs> Without an instrument in key, where, pray, would Joseph Hoffman be? Piano tuners work, it's said, with hardly any overhead. Their chief equipment, so I hear, is but a well-adjusted ear which notifies them tip like that if any note suddenly bleed flat. They're not affected by the tariff, they're in no danger from the sheriff. To all the finest homes they go, and by the hour play La Cito. <laughs> if I had young tenors or sopranos, I'd have them taught to tune pianos. <laughs> I'm grateful for the love I feel in this room tonight, and I'm grateful to all of you for your creativity, your enthusiasm, and for helping to keep things fresh and interesting for me. I'd like to close with one of my favorite poems of all time, If All the Unplayed Pianos, by Winfield Cowley Scott. If all the unplayed pianos in America, the antimacassar uprights in old ladies' parlors, in the stores, the ones that were rented for vaudeville, the ones where ill fame worsened and finally died, the ones too damp at the beach and too dry in the mountains, the ones too old for Sunday school, helplessly dusty, the ones mothers used to play on winter evenings, the ones silenced because of the children growing away. Resounded suddenly altogether from coast to coast, untuned joy like a fountain jetted everywhere for a moment. The whole nation burst to untapped, untrammeled song. It would make, in short, a most satisfactory occasion, a phenomenon which the scientists could never explain. Thank you so much for this great honor. Thank you for being here and thanks for listening. <laughs>